This episode of Sexplanations is sponsored by NordVPN, a virtual private network that provides an encrypted secure tunnel for online traffic to flow. <coughs> Recently, the mother of masturbation, Betty Dotson, died. She was the sexological great who led intimate circles of people to orgasm on mats with mirrors and vibrators. She drew stunning illustrations of anatomy and sex, including this animated internal clitoris where she says, And we'd have the inner lips. Hopefully nice full ones, they're my favorite. Betty Dotson wrote books, she made films, she took the stage, she taught on YouTube, she sexually liberated generations, and for that, I'd like to answer your masturbation questions in her honor. Question. You know how girls are supposed to go to the bathroom after sex? What about if you were just rubbing your clit over your clothes? No insertables, no contact with fingers. I can't find any info on that scenario. Everything is assuming that you use a dildo or something. If you're rubbing the clit over your clothes, you're probably not putting the body in contact with any new pathogens like you would with fingers or toys, insertables, etc. The reason for urinating after sex is to flush the urethra out so that if germs like E. coli from the anus migrated to the urinary tract, you would get rid of them. There isn't strong research that says this reduces the risk of UTIs for any type of sex or masturbation, but many healthcare professionals still promote it as harm reduction. Peeing after masturbation, where you had your clothes on and you're manually stimulating yourself, isn't a health benefit per se, but it does support the habit of coming and then going to the bathroom. What are helpful tips for men trying to cut down on masturbation? I'm able to use my head and don't need pictures slash videos. It is November and there's a growing community of people who dedicate this month to sexual abstinence. No nut November. This means if you're trying to cut down on masturbating, there's a lot of support online right now. Coaches, cheerleaders, teammates, so to speak, who can share their personal experiences and how it's benefited them. I'd also recommend studying the trans-theoretical model or health belief model to understand behavior change. What researchers have found helps move from contemplating limits to actually maintaining them. And replacement, what's the reason for cutting down? And what occupies that time and still serves your goal? Since it's no not November, I have kind of been thinking about the whole use it or lose it idea. Is it safe to say that abstaining for a month is not going to cause problems with being able to get an erection or keep it? Could reaching orgasm become easier or more difficult? Every body is unique. There is no evidence I've accessed pointing to erectile challenges as a result of abstaining from masturbation. People who don't have mobility to rub one out for decades get raging hard-ons. That said, masturbation affects more than just the circulatory system and gorging genitals with blood. It also engages your endocrine system, your hormones, the respiratory system, muscular system. It's a form of exercise with all sorts of health benefits. So if you stop, consider another form of body movement or self-care to maintain those. What is masturbation like for individuals who are quadriplegics or paraplegics? I would assume that sexual urges and desires would be unaffected by paralysis, but I'm curious about how the mechanics would work or if masturbation is even a viable option in terms of an activity. Correct. Urges and desires are not always affected by paralysis. Even if physiology is impacted, that doesn't mean what we want is impacted. As for mechanics, some people forego masturbation. Some use devices like vibrators or sleeves. Some people seek assistance from another person to set the stage for masturbation or full on masturbate them. Some people use fantasy. Some relocate the stimulation to another part of the body, like the neck, where massaging the neck becomes as effective as massaging a vulva. Creativity, curiosity, just like people without paralysis. Why does it burn? I'm really trying to avoid masturbation because it burns after doing it. A burning sensation could be the result of a skin irritation or infection. Friction can cause microscopic tearing. If you have a yeast infection, bacterial vaginosis, or a sexually transmitted infection, you may feel a burning sensation after sex and masturbation. Masturbation. Can ejaculation in penis people happen without orgasm? Not like accidentally, but masturbating until ejaculation, but not reaching climax? Think what you're asking is if ejaculation can be detached from orgasm in people with penises, and the answer is yes. Ejaculation and orgasm are not synonymous. You can have an orgasm and not ejaculate, you can ejaculate and not orgasm. This goes for all sexes and genders. Go Ask Alice, a fantastic sex ed resource online created by Columbia University, explains. Ejaculatory anhedonia is the term used to describe the condition in which individuals are able to ejaculate physically but don't have the accompanying feelings of release, pleasure, or orgasm, sometimes referred to as anorgasmic ejaculation or pleasure dissociative orgasmic dysfunction. This phenomenon is characterized by the ability to have an erection and experience sexual 
stimulation, but an inability for the brain to recognize the sensations as pleasurable. While anorgasmic ejaculation itself causes no physical harm, it could point to a concerning underlying cause, such as medication and psychological causes. It could also point to a physical cause, such as a spinal cord injury. Treatment options depend heavily on the root cause of the condition. What impact does psychotropic drugs have on orgasm or ejaculation response to masturbation? Does masturbation counteract the negative effects those drugs have on libido? Once upon a time, I made a video about drugs and sex, which can be applied to masturbation. If a drug like alcohol affects erectile function, and so you can't get it up as much because of the alcohol, masturbating isn't necessarily going to combat the effects of the alcohol and make you more hard, but the masturbating might be more arousing than the sex itself, which does make you more hard. Masturbating can be more arousing than sex, but that doesn't mean that it's combating the effects of a drug. It means that it is just being more arousing. The idea of not using porn bewilders me. Are there any strategies to sustaining arousal without the aid of media? Probably. I don't use porn during masturbation and I sustain arousal just fine. I think it's less about porn or not having porn and more about the lack of bewilderment though. Shifting from a habit or routine to something unfamiliar or completely unknown affects physiology in the body, which can include the genitals. I'd recommend reviewing what causes fetishes to understand how arousal is conditioned and then study up on clit lock. It sounds like porn to you is like clit lock. You need masturbation in a certain way with specific stimulation. There are ways to shift and expand and your pleasure, like breathing, change in position, toys, sensory play, and fantasy. Stay curious. I put a link to Betty Dotson favorites as well as other resources I've mentioned in the description. There you'll also find a link to NordVPN's limited time cyber deal. I'm all about masturbation and self-giving, but this offer is about sharing. Think about your loved ones. With every purchase of a two-year plan of Nord's virtual private network, you will get one additional month free and a surprise gift. A surprise gift! Mm, I love giving and receiving. Go to nordvpn.com slash explanations or use the code explanations at checkout. Nord has a 30-day money-back guarantee, so it's risk-free. nordvpn.com slash explanations.